And welcome once again back to the Way TV, Wake Up America. We're going to go quickly into the clips so that we can see exactly what we're up against with ISIS. Uh, there's a big misconception with, from what I can tell, all of our leaders in the West, uh, including the, the media, that ISIS is local and parochial only to the Levant over there in Syria and Iraq. But that's not true at all. They're global. They're embedded in all the mosques in the West. They're all over the world. It's the spirit of Islam. It's the spirit of what did Muhammad do. And as this show does, pull back the veil of Antichrist known as Islam and exposes their evil works of dar darkness. What could be more evident at the darkness of Islam than ISIS? And ISIS is not a remote group off isolated and insulated by itself. It's the leadership of the whole Ummah, the body of believers globally. And the way the people of ISIS are behaving, kidnapping, raping, murdering, marrying seven-year-old girls, all the things, beheading, the things they do are all exactly right out of the, the Quran and the Hadith, my copy of the Quran. What did Muhammad do? Um, I do notice an interesting thing. Now, while the media thinks that ISIS is only local and parochial to the Levant and don't understand that they are global and that they are sprinkled uniformly throughout the globe in every country, uh, we've shown here proof, evidence, and facts. They're in China. They're in Russia. They're in Europe. They're in Africa. They're in Asia. They're in America. They're in South America. We've proved that many, many times. They're coming across the southwest border from Mexico into the United States. We've proved that too. But the real essence of ISIS is what do they believe? And it's simple. They believe in what did Muhammad do? Clearly, they did that. So this clip that we're going to show now is an indicator of how the West is thoroughly confused, not understanding that the violent behavior of ISIS is what the Quran and the Hadith, the Sirah and the Sunnah, the four holy books of Islam are all about. We're merely seeing for the first time in 14 centuries due to the electronical sophistication that we have with uh, the media iPhones and uplinks and sharing through social media and everything, what's been going on for 1,400 years. This is very mystifying and confusing to our leaders in the West who seem to think that religion is separate from the basis of our government. But I would contend, in fact, I just handed in my doctoral thesis today about the common law that every government flows from some common law, but every common law flows for, from some religion. For example, the 57 Muslim countries of the world, their common law is based on Islam. And it's easy. Just look at their 57 flags or their constitutions or their national anthems, and you will see that the common law, the invisible cultural background that their tribes and their 
communities and nations are built upon are all built upon what did Muhammad do? And that's what this show is all about. That's what ISIS is doing. You have to pardon me. I have to get my engineer's attention. Hey, Adam? Adam? Adam, can you show clip number 18, please? Thank you. Security around the world. So. Was there an outside a contractor used for security in Af Amsterdam? And also, what is really lacking always for us is you don't give the motivation of why they want to do us harm. The screening at Schiphol Airport was uh, done by Dutch authorities, um, and uh, uh, they um, did the, the screening that was described to you earlier this afternoon. The hand luggage was, was screened, the passport was checked, uh, he went through a magnetometer, uh, but it was done by Dutch authorities. And what is the motivation? I mean, you never hear what you find out from what. <clears throat> Al-Qaeda is a, an organization that is dedicated to murder and wanton slaughter of innocents. What they have done over the past decade and a half, two decades, is to attract individuals like Mr. Abdul Mutalla and use them for these types of attacks. He was motivated by a sense of religious sort of drive. Unfortunately, Al-Qaeda has perverted Islam and has corrupted the concept of Islam so that he's able to attract these individuals. But Al-Qaeda has the agenda of destruction and death. And you're saying it's because of religion? I'm saying it's because of an Al-Qaeda Al -Qaeda organization that, falls, that uses the banner of religion in a very perverse and corrupt way. Why? This is a, this is a, a long issue, but Al-Qaeda is just determined to carry out attacks here against the homeland. But you haven't explained why. <clears throat> Can we uh, clear up a couple of things? That is so fascinating as a political scientist and as a Christian um, theologian. All of us are theologians to one degree or another. You have to be. Um, she keeps asking, why does Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Boko Haram, Mujahideen, Abu Sayyaf, why do all these Muslim groups want to kill us? And the West, that fellow who responded, is now currently in charge of the CIA should know better. Many of us think maybe he converted to Islam. The way they're dodging the issue, Helen Thomas, that lady, elderly lady, who's passed away since she made that, not too long ago, asked the correct question. Why? You mean it's religion? Absolutely. Look, the practical application of our deepest tell the most cherished beliefs is known as government. Let me repeat that. This is so confusing today in the West, and yet it's been 6,000 years of recorded history of every kindred, tribe, and nation, goy, throughout the world. The practical application of our deepest tell the most cherished beliefs is known as government or politics. But that begs the question, what's our deepest tell the most cherished beliefs? Well, our deepest held and most cherished beliefs are religion. Our deepest held and most cherished beliefs are religion. Let me go through this again. Helen Thomas wants to know why is Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Boko Haram, Abu Sayyaf, uh, Al-Shabaab, why are they kidnapping, raping, and murdering everybody? Is it religion? The people of the West don't want to hear it because they believe our government does not flow from religion. They believe our government flows from some secular blueprint called the Constitution. But in my doctoral thesis, I present the argument in 240 pages that no, every government is based on the invisible culture, the common law of that country. Consider common law to be like grammar to a 10-year-old kid. A 10-year-old kid is extremely, a normal 10-year-old kid is very communicative and articulate on passing along uh, information so people can understand and react in one way or another to what the kid says. Does a kid know adjectives, adverbs, participial phrases, and things like that? Probably not, and yet he uses them pretty darn good, probably with 95% accuracy by the time he's 10 years old. And grammar is extremely difficult. The hardest class I had in college was upper division 
grammar. Boy, the logic that flowed through that was just magnificent, really opened my eyes up. What grammar is to communication, common law is to government or politics. Common law is the invisible part of a tribe, a kindred tongue, a community, a nation. It's the stuff that we learn. For example, in Sunday school, I remember being taught the Ten Commandments, Jesus loves you, and the 66 books of the Bible, and the Golden Rule, and the Two Great Commandments, and True Religion, James 1.27, is taking care of widows and orphans. Wow. And that helped me, and by the time I was an adult and was in combat, my calling is Romans 13.4. And my doctoral thesis is on that also. Um, my calling was all set because I knew the decisions, the ethical decisions I had to make, life and death decisions to literally kill people or not kill people on the front lines of Vietnam was based on the common law that I was taught. The common law that I was taught was love your neighbor, love your enemy, care for widows and orphans, to be fair, to do justice and mercy and equity, which is how God judges the nations and the persons, Psalms 98 and 99. I learned that as a kid, and as a result, as a part of the general community, our common law created the highest degree of peace, order, liberty, and prosperity ever known to mankind. Every problem that we have had in the United States in the past, we've been able to solve based on that common law flowing from our religion, again, the practical application of our deepest held and most cherished beliefs is known as government or politics. Of course, our deepest held and most cherished beliefs are known as religion. Religion is made up of two Latin words, re meaning essence, sine qua non, the actual essence of what something is, the DNA of that being. For example, a good example is a young boy, 10 years old, walks into the house, Mom can't see him. She's got her back to him. And he says, Mom, can I kill this thing? She says, what is that thing? Thing, re, essence, thing. Essence, re, thing, essence. I left out that word thing at the beginning, so I apologize for the confusion. Re means thing, which means essence. Re of religion means thing or essence. What is that thing? If the boy were to reply to the mother, it's a puppy, she'd say, oh, Love the puppy, be nice to the puppy. If it was a black widow spider, she would say, kill it immediately. Neither statement is full of hate or love. It's based on the nature of the being, a puppy or a black widow spider. Common law, the question that Helen Thomas is asking there, you mean they want to kill us based on their religion? Oh, my goodness, they don't want to respond. Going back to that word religion, re, meaning thing or essence, and ligion, from like ligament, the tie that binds, the essence that ties the bind, like the to bind together a man and wife to create a marriage and then have children and have a family, the same thing. Government is really just family writ large. Let's go back to it again. The reason Al-Qaeda and ISIS are kidnapping, raping, murdering, beheading people is because of their religion. And the leader of the CIA there, John Brennan, who's answering that question, he doesn't want to answer that. And he comes up with some myth that says um, Islam is a good uh, religion, religion, thing that binds together, essence, and that Al-Qaeda is a deviant, outside, un-Islamic um, category or a group of people under the subheading of Islam overall. We've heard that lie before. Islam is a peaceful religion that's been hijacked by a few radicals. That's absolutely untrue. Flip it. Islam is a very dangerous religion, and over the last few years, because they've been impoverished, they haven't been able to wage war. In 1973, when Israel was attacked again by Egypt and Syria, and they were struggling for their lives there, the price of gasoline and oil shot up immediately. At that point in time, for the first time in the history of the House of Saud, the Saudi royal family, they had surplus capital. First thing they did with that surplus capital was to enact the Quran, their religion, and make their ethical decision to go out and use the surplus capital to buy weapons um, for terror, global terrorism. 
That's why I wanted to show that clip. That clip seems so humorous and funny, and she seems like a doddering old woman, but she's not. She nailed it. You mean Al-Qaeda? That's before ISIS. Al-Qaeda, and she meant ISIS, and all these violent Muslim groups. They're attacking us based on religion? Yes, absolutely. What did Muhammad do? He attacked innocent people. He murdered them, cut off their head like ISIS, raped the... Um, widows of men who uh, Muhammad had just cut off their head. Religion. The practical application of our deepest tell and most cherished beliefs is known as government or politics. And of course, our deepest tell and most cherished beliefs are known as religion. Thing that ties the bind. The essence that ties the bind. The thing that motivates us to make ethical decisions and go out and help people or kill people. Under Christianity, what would Jesus do? We always want to do the golden rule, to love our neighbor, to love God with all our heart, mind, and soul, and similar to that, to love our neighbor as ourselves. Upon this rests the law, all the law and the prophets. The Bible, under Islam, it's totally different. The ethics of Islam is to go out and to spread Islam through dawah, whether it's peaceful or warfare. Let's go back to the difference in the education flowing out of the West that was based on Christianity and the education that flows out of Islam. Under Christianity and the Western concept of education that we experience today, the overarching purpose of education is to transmit the wisdom of our ancestors to every child that we might all live in a land with the highest degree of peace, order, liberty, and prosperity. That wisdom of our ancestors flows from the Protestant notion of the Westminster Confession being the basis of our Constitution. Again, I spend scores of pages in my doctoral thesis presenting that with facts, evidence, and proof. Facts, evidence, and proof. I've been involved in a number of federal lawsuits over the First Amendment, and I have learned by being deposed and sitting on the witness stand and succeeding time and time again in these lawsuits to always begin with proof, evidence, and facts, and to proceed with proof, evidence, and facts. And that's exactly what I'm saying. The overarching purpose of education in the West is to transmit the wisdom of our ancestors to every child that we might all live in a land with the highest degree of peace, order, liberty, and prosperity. Under Islam, under what did Muhammad do? Under the ethics of ISIS and Al-Qaeda, as this lady is questioning, why do they want to kill us? You mean it's the religion? Today, it is absolutely not politically correct to say, oh my goodness, they did that based on their religion. Well, they did, because that's the basis of every common law. All common law flows from some religion. The overarching purpose of education in Islam is totally different where we offer education of boys and girls, every child. The overarching purpose of education in Islam is to send boys only to madrasas, Muslim schools, to beat them into memorizing the Quran, turning them into little Muhammads, then sending them out globally as finances are available to use either the lying that Islam is a religion of peace, or to cut off people's heads to terrify people, Surah 860, to terrify and make war on the infidels, us. So that the overarching purpose of education in Islam is to send boys only to the madrasas to memorize the Quran by beating them, and then turning them into little Muhammad, sending them throughout the globe, and their goal is to either convert or kill or enslaved through the jizya, the tax, everybody globally, and thereby turning the whole world into 7th century Islam under Muhammad with the highest degree of hostility, to, hostility, disorder, slavery, poverty, and misogyny, the hate of women. Totally different. The common law of the West based on Christianity pretty much lost today. There's some pockets like the Way TV and... Dr. Bruno and the rest of the folks here at the Way TV. And under Islam, their goal is to turn the whole world into a nightmare. You can consider what Jesus said, on earth as it is in heaven, but under what did Muhammad do, on earth as it is in hell. What did Jesus do, what did Muhammad do? The sword of Jesus versus the sword of Muhammad. It's very important. 
Everything that we see unfolding now, now that I've been harping on this for year after year after year after year, the day after 9-11-2001, I came to this studio about four, four and a half years ago. Dr. Joseph Nasrallah helped me immensely to understand our job was to pull back the veil of Antichrist, known as Islam, expose the evil works of darkness. And for month after month, week after week, month after year, month, year after year, while we were trying our best to show clips and show how Islam was, all of a sudden, all of a sudden now, with ISIS doing what a good Muslim does, what did Muhammad do, what Muhammad did, and people finally seeing on the mass media, left and right, um, Republican and Democrat, everybody crying, who are these people? And we go back to the very first clip of Helen Thomas. Why do they do this? Do you mean it's religion? Let's go back and review that clip again. Hey, Adam, go ahead and back, uh, do 18 again. Repeat 18. Thank you. Security around the world. So. Was there an outside contractor used for security in Amsterdam? And also, what is really lacking always for us is you don't give the motivation of why they want to do us harm. The screening at Schiphol Airport was uh, done by Dutch authorities, um, and uh, uh, they um, did the, the screening that was described to you earlier this afternoon. The hand luggage was, was screened, the passport was checked, uh, he went through a magnetometer, uh, but it was done by Dutch authorities. And what is the motivation? When you never hear what you find out, why? Al-Qaeda is a, an organization that is dedicated to murder and wanton slaughter of innocents. What they have done over the past decade and a half, two decades, is to attract individuals like Mr. Abdul Mutalla and use them for these types of attacks. He was motivated by a sense of religious sort of drive. Unfortunately, Al-Qaeda has perverted Islam and has corrupted the concept of Islam so that he's able to attract these individuals. But Al-Qaeda has the agenda of destruction and death. And you're saying it's because of religion? I'm saying it's because of an Al-Qaeda Al -Qaeda organization. Okay. That's what we're up against today. The wanton ignorance of our leaders. That guy's in charge of the CIA. He's got to know. It's interesting. The word ignorance, the root word is ignore. To ignore. To not pay attention. He's not. And for him to respond that, Al-Qaeda is dedicated to murder and mayhem doing what it does and that it's not part of Islam. Now, also, the president, in his address last night about, Islam, um, about ISIS, continued to harp that same old hackneyed old saw that ISIS is not Islam, that Al-Qaeda is not Islam, that Taliban is not Islam. They are. They are exactly what did Muhammad do? The common law flowing from the religion of the Quran of what did Muhammad do is exactly why all of the Muslim terrorist groups throughout the whole world are doing what Muhammad does, what he did, and it proves that she, Helen Thomas, of that clip is right. It is religion. Why do they want to dedicate themselves to kill us, to murder us, to rape us, to burn us up, to throw acid in our faces, because that's what the prophet Muhammad did. What did Jesus do? None of that. What did Muhammad do? All of that. What's the difference? Why in the Muslim world of the 57 countries of Islam, they have the highest degree of hostility, disorder, slavery, poverty, and misogyny, period. 90%, 90% of human rights violations flow out of the 57 Islamic countries. You wonder why? Watch ISIS. Watch Al-Qaeda. Watch Boko Haram. Watch what they do. Talk is cheap. Action is expensive. They pay the price. The practical application of our deepest held and most cherished beliefs is known as government or politics because the common law 
the invisible things of the culture that we hold dearest. What did Jesus do for us? What did Muhammad do for Islam? Then that turns into ethics and behavior. For us, sanity. For them, insanity. The practical application of our deepest, total, most cherished beliefs is known as government or politics. Therefore, and of course that begs the question, what are the deepest, total, the most cherished beliefs but religion? And from that religion, that essence, that thing, re, and that lig ligion, tie that binds, you end up with the insanity of ISIS and Boko Haram and the rest of these guys. Look, I know a lot of people, they don't want to hear anything at all about religion. They want to hear science. They want to hear technology. Well, that's fine. Let's talk about the difference between religion and science and technology. If we have a hammer, a clock, a cell phone, a medical doctor, and a very wealthy genius in the stock market using all of the technology of the stock market, let's consider the difference of how ethics and common law, Islam, or Christianity in those five things. A hammer is not very technologically advanced. It is a piece of technology. Go and try to make a hammer without technology. You can, but what's the morality? How can you use that hammer? You can use that hammer to build a house for children or you can use that hammer to crush the skull of children. Look at a clock. A clock is not really that sophisticated compared to space shuttles and internet and iPads and things of that nature. It's pretty sophisticated though when you consider what a clock can do. But how are you going to use that clock? What's your morality of the clock? Are you going to use that clock to be on time for a birthday party or are you going to use that clock to make it a time bomb? How about a cell phone? Cell phones get a lot more technologically advanced than a hammer and a regular little low clock. But that cell phone, you can use that cell phone how? What's your morality behind the science and technology that built that cell phone? You can use that cell phone to call mom or dad and wish them a happy day, or you can use that cell phone to trigger a suicide bomber 10,000 miles away. So you got a hammer, a clock, a cell phone. What about a medical doctor? The technological skills of a scientific medical doctor are off the charts. They're at the highest level. But again, the doctor, how does he act? What does he do? What is he going to use his technology to do? To murder children, called abortion, or to save children with the measles or pneumonia? And last, what if you have a really wealthy stock market analyst who uses all of the high-tech tools he can use as a stock market? You've seen it with all their charts and graphs and derivatives and all of their QE, one, two, three, four, and things of that nature. And he makes all this money, say millions of dollars, billions of dollars like Warren Buffett. How's he going to use that money? Is he going to use that money to take care of widows and orphans or to fund terrorism, Al-Qaeda and ISIS, to create widows and orphans? And you look at the difference right there. In Christianity, true religion is taking care of widows and orphans, James 1.27. But under Islam, it's taking advantage of widows and orphans. In fact, we find that in Kaibar, the first gigantic battle, Mecca, Medina phase, when Muhammad was weak, he fled to Mecca. When he got strong, he came back to Medina, attacked the Jews, and murdered them. And here's how he raped Safiya, 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 after just murdering, beheading her husband. Merciful prophet of Islam and his campaign of eradicating all the Jewish tribes who are most prosperous and rich from around Medina. He conquered Jewish tribe of Kaibar in May 628 CE. This was a preemptive surprise attack or a sudden and unprovoked assault on the Jews of Kaibar. This was a decisive victory for Muslims. The Jews lost 93 men while the loss on the Muslim side was only 19. Muhammad took some Kaibar Jews as captives, including Safiya, an exquisitely pretty young, newly married bribe of Kinanana. He took Kinanana, cut off his head, and then said he married Safiya and raped her in the sand. 
The difference, the religion, the religion, the thing that binds, the essence that binds, the sine qua non, that essence of the overarching purpose of education in the West to create the highest degree of peace, order, liberty, and prosperity. Under Islam, the education of boys only, beating them to memorize the Quran, and then turning all of those followers of Muhammad. What did Muhammad do? Which is what ISIS and Al-Qaeda does to create the highest degree of hostility, disorder, slavery, poverty, and misogyny. The total difference. For Helen Thomas to ask, why do they want to kill us? You mean it's religion? The answer is yes. Of course. We're watching it now, 13 years later, after they blew up the World Trade Centers. When the President of the United States at that time went out publicly and lied and said that Islam was a peaceful religion hijacked by a few radicals, are you kidding me? There's no way anybody could believe that today. They do. I know. I see it all the time. I hear it all the time. People always tell me, but Steve, you're off the charts. I'm going, you know what? Until you see more and more violence of ISIS and Al-Qaeda who are bona fide true Muslims doing what Muhammad did, you're not going to believe me. In our Anglo-American Christian common law heritage, it says in the book by a famous Christian political scientist, he adds in there, but only after a long train of abuses. And that's found in our Declaration of Independence. And at the end of that Declaration of Independence, it says, we will plead our case before the supreme judge of the world, which is Jesus. Jesus is either your advocate or your adversary. He either is going to stand and his blood will cover you and you're admitted into heaven, or his blood does not cover you and he will say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Helen Thomas doubt if she was a believing Christian. But she gets the question right. And the question is absolutely appropriate. Why does ISIS and Al-Qaeda want to kill us? The Muslim Brotherhood who are in control of all of the Saudi-funded mosques in the United States, in Europe, in Canada, in Mexico, around the world, 95% of the mosques that are being built currently are all funded by the Saudi Arabians. And the Saudi Arabians even though they fear ISIS, they're still funding them. As Secretary of State George Schultz said years ago under Reagan, that the relationship between the ISIS-type people of Saudi Arabia, known as Wahhabis, it's called a grotesque, protest, grotesque protection racket, like the mafioso godfather demanding protection money, or he would blow up and kill the people who wouldn't support him. Multiculturalism is the religion of the media today. Multiculturalism is the religion, the high pope, the pope of, metaphorically, the pope or the bishop, the archbishop of political correctness is multiculturalism. And for uh, Donna, I'm sorry, Janet Napolitano in that clip there with Helen Thomas and John Brennan now in charge of the CIA, they can't say religion is at the basis of it because multiculturalism says all religions are the same. Multiculturalism, the common law of multiculturalism is that religion is ridiculous. The common law of multiculturalism, the religion, the tie that binds, the thing that binds together of multiculturalism is that there's no difference between Islam in Christianity, in Hinduism, and atheism. There's no difference. Multiculturalism. Oh, what they say is they might wear uh, different clothes, eat different food, and speak a different language, but the, everybody's all the same throughout the world. That's not true. I absolutely disagree with that. And once again, just go look at the, the religion of Islam versus the religion of Christianity. Just take a look at them. It's obvious if you want to look at it. It's interesting as intellectuals whom I consider um, John Brennan and Janet Napolitano and Helen Thomas in that video, while they ad adhere to an intellectualism, it's a false intellectualism. For example, when I go to court, 
in the lawsuits to support and defend the First Amendment so that street preachers and people who want to go out and witness with the gospel, when they go out, that they can freely interchange and exchange ideas with other people. But under multiculturalism, they hide their eyes. Their eyes are blinded. Their ears, they don't want to hear it. They're full of wax. Their hearts are gross, and they're deceiving themselves and deceiving everyone else, saying that what's religion got to do with it? It's got everything to do with it. And that's what this show is about, Wake Up America, The Way TV, so that people can see before it's too late, Wake Up America, before it's too late, and they come and they tear you out of your house and they start killing you and raping you and doing all those things. Okay, clip number 14, clip number 14. As you listen to the following interview of retired U.S. Army Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin, conducted by WND Radio, please remember that the Obama administration and the Hillary Clinton State Department had a heavy hand in the initiating and continuance of the Arab Spring uprisings and vigorously defended it. What was the result of the Arab Spring? The undeniable empowerment of the Muslim Brotherhood, a radical Muslim terrorist organization that has as its main goals the destruction of Israel and the destruction of the United States from within by infiltration techniques. Please also remember that it was Barack Obama himself in his book Audacity of Hope on page 261 who said, quote, I will stand with the Muslims should the political winds shift in an ugly direction, end quote. Do you still believe there's a significant infiltration risk in our own government? Oh, listen, our government is so infiltrated, and the Muslim Brotherhood in America has so much influence in this country. It is incredible. If, if Americans only took the time to do the proper research and find out just how deep this infiltration into our government is, it would it would just frighten you. I just gave a talk on this last weekend to some folks here in Washington, and they walked away saying, why don't we know this? And my answer is because it is not in the interest of the mainstream media's uh, agenda to tell you. I know we don't have as much time as you had last weekend, but uh, real quickly, a bullet point or two, how deep does this go? Well, it goes... Okay, that's a lieutenant general. He's was in charge of intel and a bunch of other things like that. He knows. I, I agree with Jerry Boykin, the lieutenant general... Jerry Boykin, he was a, an officer, came in just after um, I left the Marine Corps as an officer after Vietnam, but he's very bright. Uh, he's been ridiculed, and he's absolutely right. That what he's going back to is that the mainstream media but not, he wants to have a, a blind eye and a deaf ear, but you can see from the video, the clip with Helen Thomas and Janet Napolitano, CIA director, John Brennan, they're the same as the mainstream press. They, they are worshiping at the altar of multiculturalism, and multiculturalism says there can be no difference between Islam and Christianity, and you can't talk about that. And so they cover their eyes, they cover their ears, they don't want to know the truth. And again, proof, evidence, and facts. Come, let us reason, it says in the Bible, and repeatedly in the Bible it says knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. Learn, be a Berean, confirm, check, reconcile, make sure the people are telling the truth, demand proof, evidence, and facts. But with the mainstream media and with all of our leaders, and it's in the Republican and the Democratic Party, it's in the conservative and it's in the liberal, they're all taking money from the Saudi Arabians, the black widow metaphorically of the giant global spider web, where all of this terrorist money since 1973, the Yom Kippur War, spawned by Egypt and Syria attacking the Israelis. God bless the Israelis for being able to withstand them and fulfilling biblical prophecies so that in the end times, then all of Israel will become true followers of Jesus. It's very fascinating. It's very, very fascinating. So... They're talking about the infiltration, and now we're going to see more evidence of the infiltration. Clip number 13. Clip number 13. 
Chris Christie has nominated a Muslim judge uh, in New Jersey, and of course, conservatives are outraged. How dare he? The dude is freaking Muslim. <laughs> Chris Christie's going to answer. Sharia law has nothing to do with this at all. It's crazy. It's crazy that guy's an American citizen who has been an admitted lawyer to practice in the state of New Jersey, swearing an oath to uphold the laws of New Jersey, the Constitution of the state of New Jersey, and the Constitution of the United States of America. And so this sh right, Now there's the governor of New Jersey allowing this guy that I know for a fact is Muslim Brotherhood getting in onto the bench. And again, go back to the common law. The common law is how you're going to adjudicate cases. Remember, I went through the, the technology of the hammer, the clock, the cell phone, the medical doctor, and the stock market analyst. Then you got technology, but technology is inferior to morality. Morality, your common law morality, how you're taught as a kid, and the religion that you come to, because common law is the basis of every government, and common law flows from some type of religion without an exception. So that government is based on religion. The practical application of our deepest held and most cherished beliefs is known as government. Of course, our deepest held and most cherished beliefs is known as religion. What did Jesus do? What did Muhammad do? So when Sohail Muhammad is going to sit as a judge on the bench, and Chris Christie says, well, this is crazy, this is crap is the word he used, and that he's pledged allegiance to the Constitution of the United States. No, he has not. He's a Muslim. He has pledged allegiance to what did Muhammad do. And he will be shaded in his decisions of morality how to work with technology, a hammer, a clock, a cell phone, a medical doctor, or a stock market analyst, or a collision between a husband and a wife in a marriage. His thinking is going to be shaded by his common law, which is Sharia. And that's been proved in several cases in the United States. In many, many cases in England, they have Sharia courts now in England, and it's all done off the common law of the religion, religion, the thing that binds together of Islam as they make these decisions. So we got General Boykin saying that we're being infiltrated. Then we have Chris Christie helping the infiltration of the Muslim Brotherhood judge onto the bench. And now we have in Arizona infiltration there of ISIS and Al-Qaeda types. Clip number 14, I'm sorry, clip number 12, 11, 14. You know what? I got the wrong one there. 12, 13. Well, we're not going to do it. It's my mistake. I apologize. I will... No, I got it. I got it. I don't have it. <laughs> I don't have it. I made the mistake. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. Let's look at another type of infiltration. Clip number 15. Clip number 15. Uh, thank you all for this wonderful meeting and, and informational, particularly on the counterterrorism end. My name is Tom Trento, visiting you folks from South Florida. I'm actually in town doing a, uh, a documentary, doing research on uh, the Muslim Brotherhood's uh, and operational activity in Los Angeles County. Uh, I'm holding in my hand a book called Sharia, The Threat to America, that was written by 19 national security experts including many bureau people, agency people, um, Andy McCarthy, who put the blind shake in, in prison, Jim Woolsey, and myself, I'm one of the authors. My question to the uh, LA Sheriff's Department and to the Bureau, does, do you believe the Muslim Brotherhood exists in Los Angeles County? And if you do, 
What are you doing to inform the citizens of the danger of the Muslim Brotherhood? Thank you. Okay. We actually also have Deputy Chief Michael Downing here with us. He, he um, joined us, so Jeff? Um, the Muslim Brotherhood, you know, is an organization, a, a politically active motivation. I'm sure it does exist here in a different form. Um, I think that uh, one of the benefits of what we do in terms of dealing with the motivational aspects of, of terrorism is to do is to outreach and engage with the community. Okay, I've shown that clip a number of times. I cut it off there because Michael Downing, the commander of counterterrorism for the LAPD, one of the most powerful police departments in the world, goes in there to admit that, yeah, I know the Muslim Brotherhood. I know they're here. Um, I love those guys. They have... Uh, evolved just as we as human beings have evolved and he goes on to brag that they just got a gift from 50 million dollars and that uh, Claremont of the Lincoln University here in Southern California was going to take that 50 million dollars and they were going to use it to uh, mainstream all of these imams coming into California and this is New York and New Jersey and Dallas Texas and everything else and make them better people to fit in with um, American democracy. But again, this goes to the idea, well, what's religion got to do with it? As Helen Thomas said, you mean they're wanting to kill us over religion? They're not going to convert those imams. Those imams believe in what did Muhammad do. And those of us who understand how what did Muhammad do followers called Muhammadans, how they operate, that they lie through taqiyya and they twist the truth through taqiyya and they don't tell the whole truth through lying through omission, and they lie, lying through commission, and that these guys are going to get all this money through this college here in Southern California, and they're going to use that money to further the infiltration. And if you saw on there, they had the police, and they had the deputy sheriffs, they had the FBI, and all these other guys are Muslims, and they're all supporting the Muslim Brotherhood. All right, clip number 16. Good evening. Assalamu alaikum. I'm deeply regretful that I cannot be with you this evening. As you listen to my message, I'm either in Qatar, Abu Dhabi, or Egypt, meeting with my Arab law enforcement colleagues. We are working on strategies of cooperation, public safety, and education on a worldwide basis. I want to thank CARE for the friendship that has been extended he said, I want to thank CARE. CARE is Muslim Brotherhood. We know for a fact that CARE, Council on American Islamic Relations, working very closely with Sheriff Baca, good friends with Michael Downing, working together. That was Baca's deputies at that meeting on that last clip where Michael Downing was crowing and bragging that he got $50 million to try to mainstream imams. These two guys, legal authorities at the highest level, two of the most powerful police and sheriff departments in the world are actively aiding and abetting, infiltrating Muslim Brotherhood, ISIS-supporting, Al-Qaeda-supporting people to be in charge of us, to allegedly protect us. And again, Helen Thomas nailed it. You mean religion? They want to kill us because of religion? Absolutely. What did Muhammad do? He wrote a Quran. Kill him. Surah 860. Terrify them, cut off their fingers, cut off their heads, chop them up, rape them, bring steeds of war, horses and tanks and airplanes and everything else you could do. ISIS, what you're seeing there. Clip number, the next clip we're going to show, you won't be able to pick it up. I've watched this clip a number of times, and it's amazing. The more I watch it, the more I see, oh my gosh, there's more and more Muslim Brotherhood guys in here with Sheriff Baca. Okay, clip number 19. Well, tonight there was a meeting here at the Omar Mosque, a coalition of Muslim American groups gathering here to talk about things like homeland security. They were also here supporting a sheriff they say they like very much. A sheriff who told me before the meeting, well, he's very upset tonight. You better believe I'm angry. Sheriff Lee Baca upset over what Congressman Mark Souter of Indiana said to him last week. 
Take a look at these pictures from the KPCC radio website. The sheriff was invited to talk at a Homeland Security subcommittee meeting in Washington. He planned his words carefully, talked about how ever since 9-11 he worked daily with the Muslim American community, including many of the people in this room, about how they formed alliances to fight terrorism, successful working relationships. What's important about the testimony is these are proven examples of how a community can pull together. But then last week, Republican Congressman Souter questions the sheriff's relationship with the Council on American-Islamic Relations, which he implies is bent on the destruction of Israel. At the subcommittee meeting, he says, The security of Israel has always been at the forefront of my thinking. And for you to associate me somehow through some circuitous attack on care. Council on American-Islamic Relations is Hamas. Council on American Islamic Relations is Hamas. Hamas is the guys in there trying to kill everybody that's Jewish in Israel. Council on American Islamic Relations is Hamas. We have all the proof, evidence, and facts are unindicted co conspirators in the Holy Land Foundation. We have all the proof, evidence, and facts. Sheriff Baca, the guys in that video, Maher Hathut, is an older man, retired heart surgeon, living in Los Angeles, born and raised in Egypt. He studied at the feet of the founder of the Muslim Brotherhood, Hassan Bana. Hassan Bana, Muslim Brotherhood, is the intellectual backbone and central nervous system of ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram, Abu Sayyaf, Mujahideen, Amirs of the Caucasus, all of these terrorist groups all over the world. It is so frustrating for me to watch on television, left and right, Republican, Democrat, Fox, and CNN. They cannot understand that all of the bloodshed, all of the raping, all of the beheading, all of the chopping off the heads and putting heads on top of poles, all of this stuff is based on what did Muhammad do, which flows right out of Hassan Bana Muslim Brotherhood, and Sheriff Baca, in that clip, he's got Maher Hathut, who used to study at the feet of the founder of the Muslim Brotherhood, which has morphed into ISIS. And they're all the same because they're all doing what the Quran says. What did Muhammad do? That's what you do. If you have a hammer, if you have a clock, if you have a cell phone, if you're a medical doctor, if you're a rich guy, with millions and billions of dollars from the stock market, then you do what Muhammad did. With a hammer, you crush skulls. With a, cell with a clock, you make a time bomb. With a cell phone, you trigger a suicide bomber. As a medical doctor, you use it. How many medical doctors have been suicide bombers? The, medical do the suicide bomber about two years ago in Afghanistan that blew up the CIA was a medical doctor. The medical doctors of the Muslim Brotherhood in the United States are very active doing what Muhammad do and trying to destroy and kill people. And stock market analysts, the Muslims are huge because of all the money they have in controlling all of that. Helen Thomas, little old lady, scoffed at, laughed at, humiliated, ignored. There we have that word, the root word of ignorance, ignore. You have the director of Homeland Security and today's current CIA lead, leader. You have Janet Napolitano and John um, Brennan laughing at her. Why? Because they're multiculturalists and they refuse to accept that there could be a difference between religion, which brings us to clip number one. Clip number one. On May 21st, French historian Dominic Venner shocked France when he walked into Notre Dame Cathedral, put a letter on the altar, and shot himself in the head. It was a protest against Islamization and France's new gay marriage law. He said in his suicide note he hoped his death would wake up the nation. Europe is being forced to awaken because parts of Europe are literally on fire. In Sweden a few weeks ago, predominantly Muslim immigrants set fires for several nights. In Britain, a soldier was butchered on a London street by a Muslim. In France, a recent convert to Islam tried to do the same thing to a French soldier, but only wounded him. Amidst failing economies, Europe is continuing to fracture into ethnic tribes that hate one another. Even German Chancellor Angela Merkel has admitted that multiculturalism has failed. It's led to immigrant ghettos inside European cities. Multiculturalism has failed, absolutely. Multiculturalism, the common law, the common law, 
of the family, of the tribe, of the community, of the nation, of the goy. Each and every tribe has its own common law, and every common law is the glue that holds together so that people in that community can make decisions based on their religion. For us in the West, it was under the Ten Commandments, to do unto others as you would have done unto yourself, or to do not unto others as you would not have done unto yourself. And you have the common law. If you don't work, you don't eat. And knowledge is important. Come, let us reason. Can't we work this thing out? The, the, the Berean concept of prove it, prove it, prove it, which led to the basis of science and technology, are all Christian concepts. And in the West, because of the nature of man, we know through our Christian political science, through our Holy Bible, that man is ambitious, vindictive, and rapacious, that man is depraved, and that you have to divide power, enumerate power, power not enumerated to the federal system as reserved for the states, because dividing power is a way that we can keep our liberty, because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there you will find liberty. Where the spirit of Islam is, what did Muhammad do? There you will find slavery. Everywhere. Of course we made mistakes. We are human beings. But we as Christians can correct our mistakes. Or we can go back to our common law heritage of what did Jesus do to release our slaves, to stop making mistakes. But when what did Muhammad do is the basis of ethics and a Muslim is with ISIS or Al-Qaeda or Boko Haram. They're Mohammedans. What did Muhammad do? They're true followers in the sense of the Quran. The 22 verses of the Quran says, do what Muhammad did. They're Mohammedans. They follow Muhammad. Muhammad, the lunatic who worshipped the moon. Why do you think the crescent moon is on so many of their documents, on their flags, is incorporated into Ramadan? And that people who never met a Muslim in Europe or Asia or China or Africa, and all of a sudden this person shows up with this symbol of the moon. They worship the moon. Originally, Muhammad came out of worshiping the moon. Luna. And these people were surprised and shocked like Helen Thomas. Oh, why do they want to kill us? Why do they want to butcher us? Why do they want to cut off our heads? Why do they want to rape our girls? Why do they want to enslave us? You mean it's the religion? And where the religion of Islam goes, you always have this violence so that people looking at the behavior of the common law of Islam would see crazy people jumping up and down with swords and trying to kill them and chop them up and rape them in the sand and all the things of what did Muhammad do. Common law is the basis of every government, and at the basis of common law is some form of religion. And from that religion will flow some type of either peace, order, liberty, and prosperity, as it has for us under the West, under what it used to be, what did Jesus do, to what did Muhammad do with Islam with the highest degree of hostility, disorder, slavery, poverty, and misogyny. I want to thank Dr. Joseph Nasrallah for everything that he has done, that the Holy Spirit has filled him, and that the Holy Spirit, the mantle of the Holy Spirit is upon him, and that he started with one little tiny camera about five and a half to six years ago, and through that camera now, with just a very small audience, there's somewhere, we don't really know, somewhere between a minimum of 40 million and maybe 100, maybe 150 million people throughout the world. And we're reaching in. We're pulling back the veil of Antichrist of Islam. We are exposing the evil works of darkness. And now the evil works of darkness are being shown through the media all over the world as they do what did Muhammad do. And I thank Joseph Nasrallah and Adam and everybody at the staff of The Way TV for allowing me to come in and say these things that sound so strange and aberrant and not in synchronization with Christianity. And yet, when you look at Romans 13.4 and Hebrews 11, 
11.34 in particular, in 2 Kings chapter 11, where the line of Jesus was saved by the church and the state working together, Romans 13.4, working together for the greater glory of God so that ministers who preach the gospel can go out and be safe because ministers of God like myself, like Nehemiah, can stand there and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem so that the gospel in its form could go out and transform the whole world into what did Jesus do. Thank you for listening. I know it's difficult for people to understand, but eyes are being opened and ears are being opened, and the gospel is winning regardless of what you see on the TV. This is only the first step. What you see with ISIS today is global, and it's going to get enormous, and the church of Jesus Christ will prevail because the church of Jesus Christ is indestructible. Praise God. Hallelujah. Good night.